I just got to start by saying I really like this Miu Mini Plus handheld. And that may be a shock to a lot of you guys out there who've been following my channel. As, yeah, I've reviewed a ton of these little emulation handhelds straight out of China, and a lot of them don't really do it for me for one reason or another. But sometimes I think just keeping it simple, having some quality components, the buttons, the D-pad, the screen, those are like the big things. And then if you're gonna sell these with a, you know, pre-built setup on there with ROMs, at least have it organized. None of these have been perfect with that, but I really do like what they've done here. Now I know I reviewed the previous Miu Mini a long while back and I know that they had some issues with the not being able to get the screens. So they decided to make this bigger version and there's not really a huge difference between them. But I find where I did enjoy the, uh, the previous model, I like this one even more because it's slightly bigger, it's more comfortable. And they have made some slight changes here. And just every game that I've played on this thing, I've not had an issue. Now, yeah, it came with ROMs. Uh, Go Game Geek, they're the ones who sent this to me for purpose of review. And initially when I first got this in my hands, I started to mess with it and load some games. And I was like, I was ready to just start blasting this thing. I don't know what was going on. And I didn't capture any footage of this, but when I first powered it on, I was like, boom, let me play Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. It was the first game in the list. And the screen was like tearing like horrible. There was waves going through, it looked bad. And I was like, okay, maybe Super Nintendo doesn't work on this or something. And then I switched to PC Engine and it was the same thing. I, I don't know what was going on. I don't remember what the battery life was, but I was like, okay, let me just set this aside. I'm gonna charge it up. I'll get ready to film a video the next day type of thing. And then when I begin to film the video, I'm like, oh, none of that screen tearing is going on. So that's one thing to note. If you get one of these, you know, not enough power, charge it up. First thing you're gonna wanna do. But so far playing this, yeah, there's been no issues with it. The screen is brilliant. I really love it. Playing any kind of fighting game, I'm having no issues doing my Hadoukis and my Dragon Punches and all that stuff. My diagonals, the movement. Like, they got the D-pad straight on this. They got the buttons good. Everything feels fine. And then what I really like is the shoulder buttons. Now, with a small form factor handheld, this kind of stuff is pretty difficult to get right for everyone but I'm just gonna say I like the way they are on this handheld. Similar to the previous model, but raised a little bit to where my fingers can easily touch both the L1 and L2, R1 and R2, and just kind of pivot around. I don't know, it just, it feels good. Now, it is a very glary screen, so I did have to kind of re-record -re some of this footage here and there of playing some of these games, because I kept like re-watching my footage. I was like, oh man, like you can't even see the screen because it was, a, a light shining off of it type of thing. So it is a very glary screen, so be aware of that. But playing everything here, I've done a little bit of Neo Geo. That works great. NES, of course. Super Nintendo, arcade stuff. PS1. PS1 was interesting because th there's quite a few games in here. I got a 64 gigabyte uh, pre-set up one from Go Game Geek, like I said. It seemed like it was a decent list of games. Like, of course, it's not all encompassing for all the systems, but the only system I had an issue with the way the ROM list was, was PS1. And I did find like, hey, a couple games like Final Fantasy VII, for example, they were not the English release. So, hey, but you know what? I can easily swap that out. I just plug in the micro SD card into my PC and change it with the proper ROM that I want to play. You could easily add games to this just by plugging in the micro SD card into your PC and going into the ROMs folder, finding the appropriate system and adding your ROMs. So this is very easy to expand upon or change things. But the way the game list is already set up, it's, it's fine, I think. The only issue that I came across, and it wasn't even a big issue, it's just something to note just in case like you jump into arcade stuff. This is where I, I noticed this thing. Uh, if you jump into the arcade games and you're like, hey, I want to play uh, Street Fighter 3, and you click on it, you know, third strike, and it doesn't load up, and then you click on the other two versions of the game, and they don't load up, it's because you're in the wrong emulator. So you'd have to switch to going into Final Burn Alpha 
as an example, or I think it may be listed as arcade instead of MAME. So the ROM sets are shared between MAME and then arcade or Final Burn Alpha and Neo Geo, they're all like shared. So when you click on any of those different arcade systems, all of the ROMs are there, but they did do a decent thing in that they have separate folders for each arcade system that is supported. CPS 1, 2, 3, Neo Geo, that kind of thing, then a few categories. So it's easy enough to, to go through. But yeah, if you load up a CPS game, it may not run in MAME. So you're going to want to go to the other and it'll work just fine. Uh, so I know some sometimes you'll find arcade ROMs just don't load up. But I went through and loaded a, a ton of arcade games and they all played fine. Loaded up a ton of PS1 games and they all played fine. And that's pretty much where you should expect performance to top out at. PS1. Don't expect anything beyond that. This is not a crazy powerful system. I'll put the specs up on the screen, but yeah, and I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, if it does what it comes included with well, fine, great. I hate when these companies, they want to put like Dreamcast and it can't play Dreamcast or Nintendo 64, that kind of thing. If you want a system that can run all that stuff and beyond, then you're going to spend more. You're going to look for something else. But this is just a nice, small, little portable handheld that does great with Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, NES, a lot of arcade stuff, and up the PS1. Battery life is decent. These are the things that I like about it. The screen quality looks great. It's a lot of fun. Now, I know people will be bringing up Onion OS, and that's going to be a good option here to really tweak things and to fine-tune the setup as a lot of times with like these Miu Minis and other handhelds, they're not extremely optimized, but I think out of the box, this one does okay. But at this time, like I did use Onion OS and it's a thing where you should wait for the newer version because if you use the one that's available now, uh, you may run into a few issues. The things that I saw before I reverted back to stock OS was like the battery life. It gets confused with that and it can't read it right and you have to go into the system to turn off like auto powering off or exiting games that the battery life is low because it just thinks the battery's dead. Just be warned, I think you want to wait for 4.2 Onion OS to come out. The devs have said, I believe they're being, you know, that's being worked on. It should be coming out sooner than later, let's hope. But yeah, that'll be one way to, you know, kind of tweak things with the system. But you do have access to RetroArch in the stock OS. You can tweak things to your liking to a degree. But yeah, I, I really do like this one. I mean, it, does it blow me away? No, not exactly, but for it being a cheaper, smaller handheld and the things that I would want to use it for with it just having a D-pad and some basic buttons, it performs great. Let me know what you guys think. Bye.